or time is, I want you to close your eyes this time while you sing it. And I want you to remember when Jesus come into your life and he touched you. Because I'll tell you what, that's something that you should never, ever forget. Amen. I remember when he touched me. Oh, I remember when he touched me. And yes, he oh, made yeah, he me whole. Me. And the Bible, just like the scripture right there says, the, the song there. And, and, and something happened. Something happened. You know something happened. And it made you whole. So can we sing it one more time? Close your eyes. I want you to think about that day that you gave your life to Jesus. And he reached down and he touched you. And you knew it was a supernatural touch from the Lord. And you knew without a doubt that that weight of sin was lifted off of you. And you were made whole. Folks, that's the reason to praise him. That's the reason to praise him. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we sing this song, I pray that you'll touch every individual in this place right now. Lord, stir up their mind right now by the way of remembrance. Let them remember, God, the day you come in their life. And that right there is going to give them something to praise about in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing it one more time. One more time. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, man. I don't serve God by feelings. I serve him by faith, but I like when I feel him. <laughs> Amen. Don't that feel good when the Lord touches you? Amen. There's nothing on the face of this earth that can compare to the touch of the Lord. I don't care, folks. I've been out there. I know. I've been out there. I've tried that stuff. I've tried everything that make you feel good. And I, it's a temporary fix, and it always has to be updated. But I'll say one thing about it. When the Lord touches you, he gets down in there, and it's like a reservoir in there. And all you got to do is call on his name, and boom. It just, you pull a little water out of the wells of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Am I the only one in the house excited about Jesus today? Uh, can I get a witness over here? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. If you have your Bibles. Uh, let's turn to the book of Psalms. We're going to read a couple of things, but Psalms uh, chapter 1, amen, and then about 10 books to the right after that, we're going to be focusing our, 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 our message today out of the book of Haggai, Haggai uh, chapter, amen, hey, Haggai chapter 1. We're going to be focusing on that today too. Father, I love you today. I love you. I appreciate you. And I really am so thankful, Lord, to be able to honor to stand here today. Proclaim the word of the Lord. It's your word. I know it will never come back void. And I'm just praying now, whatever you got designed for this word today, whatever you want to do with this word today, your word, the holy word, the word that is forever settled in heaven, the word, God, that will reach out and touch the unclean, the one that will tear walls down, the one that will heal bodies, the, the same word, God, that you were manifested in when you come to this earth, Lord. You spoke things in existence, God, by your word. And then that word, that word which was you, Lord, became flesh and dwelt among your own people and become part of the own redemption plan. God, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the word of God. And I thank you, Lord, that we can sow a seed today and, that, and it'll get in good ground. I know it will because the spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is here and it's freely here today, Lord, in the anointing, God, I ask right now to be upon it, that you'll have uh, the ears out there that are listening, will have 
ears to hear what the Spirit is saying today. Thank you, Lord, in advance, right now by faith, of what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 1. Look what the Scripture says here, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. You know what meditate means? That don't mean you just kind of little surface here. That means you're digging down in there. You're meditating on him. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he doeth shall prosper. Man, what a promise. Praise God. What a promise. Those that delight their self in the Lord and meditate on him, then everything they touch will produce good fruit. It'll be like planted into that tree tapped into that stream right there that always nourishes that inward man. Amen. And whatever you do, whatever you do, will prosper. Amen. I like a promise like that. You know there's over 7,000 promises in the Word of God, and that's just one right there. That's that's one that kind of goes in my top five. My top five right there. Amen. Book of Haggai, chapter 1. Some of y'all probably never heard of the book of Haggai, but it's in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament. It's about 10 chapters pass to the right there from the book of Psalms. Amen. I want you to keep your finger there. Amen. We're going to read in just a moment of that. But I want to start off with saying this. There's many people that spend so much time, so much effort, so much energy, amen, worrying and working and wrestling with things without the blessing of God. Do you know any warriors? Do you know anybody? Not warriors, warriors. Do you know any worriers that people worry about everything? Uh, they work too much. They wrestle too much without uh, experiencing the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. But in the book of Haggai, we're going to look at it today. This prophet Haggai is sending a message to the people. And he's wanting to teach them on how to get their priorities in order. How to get their priorities straight. Because folks, sometimes just being a Christian... I mean, that's a good thing, but sometimes we get out of order. We get our priorities out of order. We kind of throw God back over here sometime and kind of pick him up as, a, as a, like a reserve where he should be controlling every step of our life. Amen. Did you know that the Lord wants to be in every part of your life? Did you know that? Not just when you're experiencing trouble, not when you're experiencing a situation or a health issue and you need to call upon him. Yeah, he wants that too. But like I said last week, he wants to be in every aspect of your life. Even when you have an appliance breakdown, he wants you to pray about it. Now, a lot of folks don't do that. That's okay. Don't do it. Go buy one. Go spend the money and go buy one. But I'm going to let the Lord have his shot at it first. Because I believe God says right here that everything we touch will prosper when we're walking with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Haggai gives them a word from God, from the word of the Lord, that's going to reverse their ways of thinking, and it's going to motivate them to engage in the work of the Lord. Amen. And just like these people that we're going to talk about here in a minute, we can become guilty of this, of placing all this emphasis on our own concerns and priorities and forget about putting God's will, God's work, and God's worship in our life. Amen. 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 We, 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 when we put God first, when we seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, then he says all these things will be added to, to you. When we do these things, he promises us that he'll empower us. He promises us that he will guide us. He promises us that he will enable us to enjoy all of his blessings. Psalm 68, 19 says it like this. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Now, we talk about His mercies are new every morning. You know, I like to quote that scripture because it is true. Every morning when you wake up, God deposits it, brand new mercy in your spiritual bank account. But here's another thing He deposits. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Benefits, even the God of our salvation. When you think about benefits, think about your job that you work. Many of you have jobs that carry benefits, insurance, or paid time off, or 
401ks. I mean, these are benefits from your job. Think about the benefits God puts out on you. Every day, not only does he give you new mercy, but he pours out benefits to you. you got the best fringe benefits of ever right here. Because you've got a retirement plan that's not a pension that comes every month. You've got a retirement plan in heaven for eternity. You hear me? For eternity. Amen. That's exciting to me. Today I want us to look at some of these key, key principles of how to access the blessings of God. Well, well what are you talking about, Pastor Steve? How to access the, the blessings of God from the book of Haggai. Amen. Now look at me for a minute. I want you all to look up here. What do you see? What do you see, folks? I'll start right over here. What do y'all see? A black dot, okay. Is that what y'all see? You see a black dot? What else you see? Anything else? A hole, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. A target. Yeah. You want me to put it right here? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, now, now, now listen to me a second. You see the black dot, that's very noticeable, isn't it? But you've overlooked the most important thing of this whole thing. You missed the, the piece of paper. You have missed what's around the black dot. There's more around the black dot than the black dot. And so many times, folks, we are guilty as children and people of God to stay focused and distracted on the black dot that has come upon us, the disappointment, the trials, and we forget about the numerous blessings that are around the trials and around the, the, the black dot of our life. Amen. So I want you to stay, keep that in mind as we talk about the book of Haggai right here. Chapter 1. Look what it says here. I want to start at verse 3. Well, I know it's on the screen. It's going to be on the screen at verse 4, but I was reading this, and I thought I'm going to back up to 3. Haggai chapter 1. Verse 3, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your paneled houses, and this house, which is the temple, lie in waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Listen to me. Amen. You have sown much. And bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe ye, but there's none that is warm. He that in it that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. What is Haggai trying to say here today? What is he trying to get a point to these people here that I believe he's wanting to share with us here today? Point number one is this blessings, blessings of the Lord are missed when we fail. To put God's purpose, God's priorities, and God's plans first. You miss blessings. Amen. You miss those. See, the people had become fruitless. Haggai speaking to these people. And he's trying to call them back to God's value. Haggai was around 80 years old, somewhere in the 80s. 50,000 Jews had come back from ex exile in Babylon. And now, 70 years after their captivity, the Jews were able to return to Judah Amen. And rebuild the temple. But they had a little problem here. There's a little problem. You know, whenever you want to do something for God, the old enemy steps up a little problem, always tries to hinder that. And the problem was the Samaritans opposed the construction of the temple. Amen. And they caused all of the work of the temple to stop and sit idle. Amen. And the Jews had become lazy, and their focus had turned to their own priorities instead of the priorities of God. They were more interested in their own houses than the house of the Lord, the temple of God. Amen. The Jews had allowed the Lord's temple to sit idle and go unfinished for 16 years. Now that's a lot of time, folks. When God called them back out of exile after 70 years in, in Babylon in captivity to build back the temple that was in ruins. It had been destroyed. It was in ruins. And they sit idle for 16 years not doing anything for the, work, for the work of the Lord. And the Lord is going to use Haggai the prophet here to wake up the people from their sleep. He says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Get out of your idleness. And so, folks, where does that relate to us here today? We are missing out on the blessings of God when we just sit idle. But I come to church, Pastor Steve, isn't that good enough? 
I know God's got a calling on my life, but you know what? I'll just wait for that door to come swinging wide open. Where the door is swinging open and the Lord's even giving you a little tug sometimes and you still are sitting idle, not doing anything to trust in the Lord for what He wants to do in your life. And see, these folks were doing it. They were When we fail to trust in the Lord to fulfill our calling we have on our life, amen. We had this calling. We had this gifting. Question, are you using it? Are you using the calling and gifting that the Lord has put upon you? There's not a soul in this building right now that God has not got a gifting or a calling for. I don't believe God says, well, hey, sister, so-and-so, I'm going to give you 20 gifts, and this person over here ain't going to have nothing. Or I'm going to give you a calling over here, and, and, and boy, you're good when you go ahead and take it, and everybody else just sit idle. I believe God, what makes God's kingdom strong is when everyone has got their hand to the plow and said, okay, Lord, what can I do for you? What can I do for you, Lord? Well, I, I, I don't know what to do. Well, how about just serving somebody? How about just being humble and just saying, can I help you somehow? The Bible says that to lift up others more than ourselves. Amen. Everybody likes a pat on the back. There's nothing wrong with that. I like edifying people. I like complimenting people. But it's good to compliment others more than your own self. You notice it's hard to reach your hand back here and pat your own back? You know, God didn't make us with joints like that to where we could kind of pat on our own back. But he did make us where we could kind of pat others real freely, if you get me. Amen. See, these folks have become idle. Amen. James 4.17 says it like this. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. If you know to do good and God's laid on your heart that you should be doing right and you just are not doing it, then sin is what comes into your life. Don't let the enemy intimidate you. Don't let him discourage you or depress you, amen, from what God has called you to do or what God has called you to be. I'm I'm telling you today. And you may be here today and say, well, God could never use me. I mean, you don't know me, Pastor Steve. You don't know what I used to be. You don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know about me. Uh, You know, and God could never use somebody like me. He could never, ever want to try to pull me into a, a walk with him to where I could be a benefit for him. Well, really? Okay, well, listen to this. Noah. You remember God used Noah? God used Noah. To build a big boat, we know the story. He flooded the earth, destroyed all living creatures, all living things. And Noah and his family was the only one saved. Praise God, he used him. But did you know after the flood, after the, they come off the ark, that Noah got drunk? Did you know he got drunk? I mean, Noah got drunk. He, you know, kind of had a little bit too much and all. So how about that? How about Lot? How about Lot? Here's Abraham's nephew. Goes to a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. A place full of sin, vexed his own soul from day by day, yet God had favor on Lot, pulled him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, amen, destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. And you're thinking, well, okay, yeah, but Lot was conformed to it, and God, by his mercy, pulled him out. Okay, yeah, that's true. But did you know when he come out that he committed incest with his two daughters? Did you know that? And had children by his two daughters? Now, folks, we would look at that like, oh, man, no, that ain't going to happen. But here's Lot. Here's a man God had favor on and pulled him out. And First Peter calls him righteous Lot. Righteous Lot vexed his spirit from day to day in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So it goes to show me that even people that have sin or, or have things that would put their own mind, God can reach in by his mercy and grace and pull them out. What about Abraham? Abraham was an old man. He was 100 years old. 100 years old before God fulfilled the promise to him and gave him Isaac a son. He got a little ahead of God, you know that, and, and saw, well, maybe this ain't going to happen. My wife can't bear children. She's 90 years old. There ain't no way that could happen. I might as well just take on the little handmaiden here, and, and maybe that's what God wants. Sometimes, folks, listen to me. When you put that cart before the horse, you're in trouble. Never fall outside the plan of God. If you do... Boy, you're going to be backstepping here for long. And you're going to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I put the cart before the horse, and man, I need you to rescue me. Amen. Isaac, the one that Abraham had. Do you know he was, the scripture says he was a daydreamer? He was a daydreamer. Jacob cheated his brother Esau out of a birthright blessing. 
Now, these are people that God used. These are people that God called and qualified that thought probably like you and I here today that there's no way God could use me. Think about Leah. Leah, the scripture says, was not very attractive. Now, I wouldn't want that as me in the scripture, but it it words that. Some, like Bathsheba, was very fair to look upon. That means she was a good-looking thing. And even Rachel and some of them. But yet it uses the words about Leah was not very attractive. It uses it in the more of a term like very not, not very attractive to look upon, meaning she didn't have the looks as others. Now, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, why would you even say that, Lord, in the Scripture? Joseph was mistreated by his brothers. Remember that? They threw him in a pit. They lied to their dad, said a wild animal tore him up and killed him and all, sold him into slavery right there into Egypt. He was lied upon by Potiphar's wife and even spent two years in prison for something he didn't even do. Now, I'm, I'm saying these examples because you might be here today thinking, God could never use me. God could never fulfill his plan and his calling upon my life. I, I've just been way out there. There's no way the Lord could help me. How about Moses? Moses was a murderer. Do you know he murdered an Egyptian? And everything, he felt so guilty, he thought they were coming after him. He went and hid in the wilderness for 40 years. And the Lord could have said, yep, that's right, you did wrong. Stay out there and live it up, brother. But after 40 years, he comes to and appears to Moses in a burning bush and says, I got a, I got a, I got a calling for you. I got a plan for you. And Moses, all trying to escape what he had done and all, thinking God could never use him, he says, you're exactly the one I want to use. But no, no, Lord, I can't even speak right. I stuttered. Won't you use somebody else? He said, no, you're the one I want. Isn't it interesting that all the folks in this word of God, the, the, the more low down they are, the more God goes after them to use them? And we, we, we look at ourselves like we could never, ever be any kind of favor to the Lord. How about Gideon? Gideon was insecure and had low self-esteem. You may be like that today. You may be a little insecure and feel a low self-esteem. Hey, you qualify. You qualify for the calling of the Lord here today. Amen. How about uh, Samson? Remember Samson, big strong guy? Samson and everything? He was a womanizer. Oh, he liked the women. He had the strength and everything, but he's very weak in the mind. Strong in body, weak in mind. Amen. But God used him. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah was way too emotional. Scripture said he cried all the time. Cried all the time. Amen. So you see the variety here? You see the variety of the people in the Word of God? Timothy. Look at Timothy. He's way too young. And the Scripture said he had ulcers. Now it words, it, it, it shares these things for a reason. Amen. Jonah, you know, he ran from the call of God. Big fish got a hold of him because of that. He said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to tell, preach repentance to them. Lord, get somebody else. Lord said, no, you're the one. He said, I'll show you I ain't the one either. I'm going this way. He went this way. What happened? Big fish just happened to have an appointment with him. He's in the belly of a fish for three days. And I don't know what it was like in that fish, but I'll tell you what, it probably wasn't very pleasant. And the scripture says, finally, when he come to himself, said, okay, Lord, I'm ready to do it. The fish comes and throws him up. On the, on the bank. Now, I don't know. I can just picture throw up, and I know that don't sound too good. But yet, then finally, he comes to the point and says, okay, I get the point, Lord. I'm ready to do what you want me to do. Amen. How about Zacchaeus? Remember Zacchaeus in the New Testament? Scripture says he was a real short man of stature, real short guy. Lord uses tall guys, short guys, tall women, short women, small women, big women, big men. Don't matter. I mean, God's got a, got a plan. Elijah was suicidal. Remember how much God used Elijah and everything? And he says, man, just take my life from me. Man, I tell you what, she's after me. I've got to get out of here. Lord done used it to bring down fire from heaven to, to destroy the, the prophets of Baal. And what's he do? He goes and runs and hides and everything because somebody's after him. Somebody's after him. And he just can't stand it. Amen. David committed adultery. Remember that with Bathsheba? And then was part of a murder, tried to cover that up. Had Uriah killed? I'm using these examples because I want you to hear some examples of these people and think, wow, after I tell you these things, you'll think, man, yeah, God can use me. If God can use them, he can use me. Amen. God can, God can touch you. Remember Peter? Peter was the man that God gave the keys to. You're, you're the rock. You're the keys of the heaven. You get the keys to the kingdom, Peter. Amen. But he had a short temper, and he had a bad temper. I mean, he was quick to... 
to, to fire on somebody. He even denied Jesus at crucifixion. I know not that guy. No, get away from me. Cursed him and everything. But yet God, look what Peter became. Peter started that New Testament church in the book of Acts. He was the first one to preach the first message of the New Testament. He says, men of Israel, this man of Jesus whom you crucified, the Lord has made him, God has made him both Lord and Christ. See, what a change. What a change. Amen. How about Thomas? Thomas was a doubter. We always call him Doubting Thomas. What a, what a title to be on him. But, I mean, that's what he was. But yet he wasn't no doubt no longer when the Lord said, look on my hands and look on my feet and look at my side and, and handle me, the Scripture says. Then he says, oh, my Lord and my God. He knew then. He might have been a doubter at the first. But then when the Lord said that to him, he become a true believer. Amen. Amen. Uh, Job, Job went bankrupt, had a lot of stuff. He lost his whole wealth. He lost his family. He lost his health. He lost everything. Even his own wife was talking about him. All these things. Martha was a worrier. Naomi was a widow. Sarah was impatient and got ahead of God's plan. The Samaritan woman had been married five times and was even living with a guy at the time that Jesus comes on the scene. Lazarus was dead for four days. Dead, dead for four days. Stinking, gone for four days. And the Lord says, that's the one I want. Lord, won't you use somebody alive over here? He's like, no, I'm going to show something through this. Right, come on out of there, Lazarus. He come on out of there and God used him. Isaiah preached naked. Did you know that? Praise God, we don't do that nowadays. But praise the Lord. I mean, I'm talking about Isaiah. He preached naked, the scripture says. The disciples all fell asleep while Jesus was praying in the garden right before he went to Calvary. They all fell asleep. And he said, hey, couldn't you just stay awake for an hour? What hour is all I ask? Couldn't you do it? Amen. John the Baptist ate locusts. <laughs> I've never eaten a locust, but I guess if you get hungry enough, you would. Amen. Mary Magdalene, at one time, the Lord had cast seven devils out of her. She had seven demons in her and then become one of the most faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason I'm saying all this to you folks is, is you may be here today and you may be saying, but God can never use me. I mean, you don't know what I've been in and you don't know where I've been and you don't know what I've done. And, but yet God used them all to fulfill His purpose, His plan, and His perfect will. So, so i got to ask you a question. What's your problem? What's my problem? What's our problem? Why can't we now say, God, boy, if you could do it for them, Lord, what do you want me to do? Show me something. Do you want, what do you want me to, to, to do? What purpose do I have? Have you ever walked in your life, and especially a Christian life, and you've been in church all your life, and you still don't know what your purpose is? Well, I pray God will open that up to you today. I pray that you'll have an open heart and say, God, yes, I have kind of wondered, what is my purpose on this earth? What is my calling? What's your plans for my life? What's your perfect will for me? I pray you'll pray that prayer because if you'll pray that prayer sincerely, God will give you that answer before you leave here today. He will do it. He don't play games with folks. Amen. He can use you if you make yourself available. Amen. Well, I'm not qualified, Pastor Steve. God never calls the qualified. He doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You hear me? You ever had anybody tell you you ain't qualified? I'd had somebody tell me that before, even in the church. Well, you're not qualified to do that. And I'm thinking to myself, Scripture come to my mind in the book of Acts where they said that the apostles, they knew they'd been with Jesus because, and they knew they were unlearned and ignorant men, but they knew they'd been with Jesus. See what I'm saying? He qualifies the called. When he calls you, look at these. All these wouldn't have been qualified either. If me and you would get their resumes here in this church and, and, and uh, uh, one of them come up to you and said, Hey, uh, I, I want to be this in the ministry here. Uh, I'm a womanizer and, and all this, that, and other. Would you put them over a ministry? Over women? <laughs> would you do that? No, see, we wouldn't. But God does this. Hey, I can take the worst of the worst and clean them up and use them for my glory, and they'll become the best of the best. Folks, that's what we got to start getting our mind on, is what God can do, not what man can do. 
We get our eyes too much on man and think I can't qualify for the man or the man's going to look down on me or the woman's going to talk about me and gossip about me and all this. When God says, why don't you stop worrying about that stuff and put your trust and faith in me because I've got something I want you to do. Amen, amen. The greatest ability to God is availability. Remember that. All right, look at the second point. Look at verse 7 here in Haggai chapter 1. Thus saith the Lord. Here he is again. He says this, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Saith the Lord of hosts, because my house, the temple, that's what that means, my house, the temple, that is in waste, you have run every man to his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon the, 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 that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon man, and upon cattle, and upon all the labors of the hand. Now, what's that mean? It means this, that blessings are missed when we fail to remember God's word, God's will, and God's ways. See, they had lost the way. They were working on their own stuff. They didn't let the temple sit idle. God's house was sitting uh, uh, unused, unprosperous, and they were over there t focusing on their own stuff. So the Lord said, okay, all right, you do that. I'll dry the land up. I'll dry the dew up. I'll dry the cattle up. I'll dry the fruit up. God's got a way of getting our attention. You know that? He's got a way of getting our attention. And blessings are missed when we fail to remember that. Amen. Haggai is telling the people again, consider your ways. Consider your ways. That means this, if I can translate it to today's English. It's time to wake up, folks. Can I, now, you understood that one, didn't you? Consider your ways. It's time to wake up, folks. It's time to get out of your idleness. Haggai is urging the people of Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, that the work was being neglected, that the work of the temple was being overlooked and considered as a lower priority. Isn't it interesting? I know this as a pastor and even as a church member and being in the church for a while now. Isn't it interesting that a lot of times the, the things of God and the work of the Lord gets pushed to the back? Well, I'll go to church, Pastor Steve. Uh, uh, I'll come if there's nothing else going on. If the Titans don't have a football game today, I'll be there. Or if so-and-so is not having an event over at the park, I'll be there. See, what we do is we become guilty like these Jews here in Haggai, and sometimes we put the, Lord, the priority of the Lord on the back over here. And we only pull on it if nothing else is going on. And the Lord's saying, no, 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 you need to consider your ways because you are missing the blessings when you're outside of my will, outside of my word, and outside of my ways. Amen. We rob ourselves of God's blessing when we're disobedient to those things. Amen. Look what Psalms 34.10 says. The young lion lack and suffer hunger, but those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. It's all about priorities. It's all about putting things that of the Lord first in our life. That's why the scripture, that's why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He didn't say, Seek ye the Lord and his righteousness whenever you can. He says, First, and then if you'll do that, all these other things will be added to you. James says it like this in James chapter 1, verse 22 Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forget what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he being not forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Man, I tell you what, I hope you're getting some of it, because I am. This is helping me right here. I tell you, this is a blessing right here today. We need to remember, first of all, the Lord's will for our life. God's got a perfect will for your life. Amen. I was thinking a while ago while we was praising the Lord, while we were singing praises to the Lord. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking Larry Tate up there praising the Lord with his mother and his brothers and all the ones that went on before him. 
Because he told me, he said, I can't wait till I get up there and praise the Lord. And I think about, thought about that a while ago, that he was praising the Lord, probably looking down on us saying, come on, folks, let's join in on this. Let's praise the Lord. He's seeing some sights right now that we can only imagine. But yet we sometimes, it, it, it take, we have to kind of be shook and get into that perfect will and perfect plan of God in order to even worship the Lord. And the Lord said, man, that ought to automatically be in you. Amen. So I see that, and I see that we we got to remember that God has a perfect will for our life, and we need to let him fulfill that. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He's got plans for you. Before you was conceived, he had a plan for your life. He had a gifting, a calling for your life. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Another promise, another promise from the Lord. His ways are perfect. His word is flawless, flawless word. Psalms 1830, as for God, his ways are perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Man, I've just given you three promises today. If you don't hear nothing else I'm saying, you need to lean on them and say, okay, Lord, I want that. I want that. Now, we need to start by by not missing the blessings of God because we need to fulfill the purpose, priorities, and plans God has for our life. Secondly, we need to fall into His will, stay in His word and in His ways. And the third blessing, look at verse 12 of Haggai. Haggai chapter 12, uh, 1, verse 12. Hang in there with me, folks. Hang in there. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shilatel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest and all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the, of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet and as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. Now look here, verse 13. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of uh, uh, Sheathel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, and the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people, and they came and did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. What is it? Point number three, blessings are missed when we procrastinate. Have you ever heard of, have you ever run across a procrastinator? One that waits to the last minute? Oh, I'll, hey, there's traffic on I-65. You better leave early to go to work. I'll be all right. I'll just speed a little bit. And you get out there on the interstate, get up there toward the interstate, and it's backed up all the way to Portland. You procrastinate. Procrastinate. Wait till the last minute to do things. Amen. And see, these people have procrastinated 23 days. Uh, 23 days they procrastinated after being back from exile to start building the temple. There's 7.4 billion people on the earth right now. 7.4 billion is the latest I heard. 70% of those 7.4 billion have not accepted Jesus as their Savior. 70%. Amen. Think about it for a minute. There's too many people that go through their life. They get up, they go to work, they run the, the, the kind of the, the format of, of oh, i got to go to work, come home, fix dinner, get a bath, go to bed. There's a routine over and over and over. They just are in a constant routine. There's so many people that are go through their life procrastinating when it comes to serving the Lord. And did you know that none of us in this room are promised tomorrow? But I've got good health, Pastor Steve. I, I went for a checkup just yesterday. Man, I got great health. Don't matter. You could be killed in a car wreck. You could fall over. Anything could happen. We procrastinate so many times. I had a person one time that I tried to witness to, and, and I did. I witnessed. I tried my best to witness, and they wasn't serving the Lord and everything, and I was just, I wasn't condemning them by no means, but I was just trying to share the Lord. Finally, this person told me one day, he said, hey, you believe in death, deathbed repentance? You believe that a person on their deathbed can get saved and, and be saved for eternity? I said, absolutely. I said, Jesus went to a... a a man in the 11th hour, and he got the same pay as the guy that worked all day. I said, yeah, yeah. All you got to do is call on the Lord. Ask God to forgive you. He'll come in there and do it. They go, that's all I want to say. I said, but you're not guaranteed to be on your deathbed. 
uh, uh, uh. Well, shoot, you got a point there. See, everybody wants to procrastinate and think, I'm going to serve the Lord one day, but i got too much stuff I want to do right now. I, I want to have my cake, and I want to eat it too. Now, Lord, let me have a bunch of fun out here, and when I've lived the world up and I've done all the world's got to offer, then I'll serve you when I get a little old and can't go do that stuff. See, I thought the same thing, folks. I thought the same thing. God is my witness. I was one of those that, man, I partied hard and, 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 and lived it up. And I thought to myself, man, when I reach 40 years old, now I was about 30 at the time, I said, when I reach 40 years old, I'll settle down, I'll start serving God. I was brought up in church. I knew it was right, right to serve the Lord. I knew it was wrong what I was doing. But I thought, man, when I reach 40, I've kind of lived it up pretty good, and then I'll start settling down just to serve Jesus the rest of my life. Well, come 33 years old, the Lord got a hold of me seven years in advance. And, 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 and called me and, and, and touched me. And, oh, yes, he touched me, just like that song. And he made me whole. And I thank God for that because I wasn't guaranteed to live till I was 40. And none of us here in here are guaranteed another day either. So don't be procrastinating the calling of what God has got on you. Amen. We hear God's Word preached on TV. We hear God's Word preached on the radio. We go to church on Sunday. We hear it preached. And yet some still fail to respond or act to what the Lord is wanting to do in their life. They still are procrastinating, just like these people in the days of Haggai. There's a scripture in Acts that Governor Felix told Paul one time. He said, when I have a more convenient season, come back and see me again. Oh, Lord, it don't ever record where Paul went back to Felix. I can't handle it right now, Paul. You're interesting of what you're saying here. But when I got a more convenient season, come back and see me again about this. Procrastination. Amen. Think about it for a minute. I know a friend of mine that I worked with at the plant, tried to witness to him, and, you know, I wasn't pushing on him. I was just every day planting a seed, watering it, planting a seed, watering it, because God's got to give the increase. And he goes, yeah, I, I, need to, I need to get right with God. I need to get right with God. I said, yeah, yeah, you do. I said, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. I said, you know, I... God's dealing with you. Yeah, God's dealing with me. I'm thinking more about it every day. You know, after we talk, I drive home and everything, and I'm thinking about what you said. So the seed was getting planted. It was in the good ground. God was giving the increase to it and everything. And he, every day, uh, yeah, 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 I need to give my life to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's something I need to do. But then this one day came, and I left him in the parking lot, and I said, I'll see you tomorrow, brother. Come back the next day, he wasn't there. I asked my boss, Where, where's so-and-so? He said, didn't you hear? I said, no. He said, got killed in a car wreck going home last night. I said, what? He said, yeah, got hit head on. Got hit head on in a car wreck. And I'm thinking, man, procrastination. Procrastination. Now he's going to wake up on the other side here in eternity. And that's between him and the Lord, of course. But I'm thinking, folks, we've got to wake up here. We don't know when our number is up. We don't know when our time is up. Jesus said he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And we don't know that. We're in the dash years here, folks. We're living in the dash years. We don't know when the Lord will say, it is finished, come on. Or heart stop pumping, lungs start, stop breathing. We don't know these things. Remember what it says a while ago in James 1.22? Be doers of the word and not hearing only deceiving yourself see when we hear God speak to us we need to put it into action if you're feeling God today tugging on your heart that means he's doing this he said behold I come and I knock at the door if any man will open I'll come in he doesn't force himself in the door handles not on the Lord's side the door handles on your side but if you hear him knocking on your heart today folks don't procrastinate he knows, and he's wanting you to be in fellowship with him. Amen. Amen. We need to be stirred up. Amen. If we're here, don't delay. Don't delay. Because when we do, we miss the blessings of God. Now look at Haggai chapter 2. Amen. In the seventh month, verse 1, in the seventh month, in the, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord to the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatel, um, governor of Judah, and, and to jo Joshua and the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, 
who is left among you that saw this house in the first glory? And how do you see it now? See, there was people there that had already seen the temple and seen the glory of God's temple. And then after it got destroyed, these folks that had already seen it like that were hurt. And they said, man, we'd already seen the glory of God. Now we, it's a bunch of rubble in there. These new Jews didn't, but there were some older Jews there that had seen it. And he's saying, is it not in your eyes in comparison as it is of nothing? Yet be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord. And work. See, look here. And work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. He says, it's time to get busy. Do something. Work, work. Come on now. You remember the temple? You remember the, way, the walk you had with God at one time? Don't sit idle again. Get busy. Put your hand back to the plow. According to the word uh, that I have covenanted, covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so shall my spirit remain among you. Fear ye not, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once. It is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all the nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Think about that. Just, man, that fires me up right there. I will fill the house, this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. I think about that because blessings are missed when we waller in our dis discouragements. When we get discouraged about things and we look around in the church and the church is not full and there's empty seats, we get discouraged sometimes. But the Lord is saying, go to work. Do what you know to do. Stay in your gifting. Stay in your, and I will bring the latter better than the former. I will bring my spirit back in there. I will rebuild. I will prosper and glorify the church again. See, folks, we can't do it. God's got to do it. But you've got to do your part. I mean, the Lord... Do you think the Lord's going to fill a house up if, if people are sitting idle and people are not doing what He wants them to really fulfill in the kingdom's sake? And when we say, oh, somebody else can do it, the Lord's going, man, you want the house to become like it was? Don't get discouraged the way it used to be. And when we had all the folks coming and people praising the Lord and people getting filled with the Holy Ghost and all that, don't get discouraged in that because that can happen again. All you got to do is get off your idleness, get off of you, and then when we procrastinate, we lose the blessings. And he says, when we get discouraged, we lose the blessings. So he's saying, come on now, you older people, you people that's been in the church most of your life. Some of you in here have been in here a long time. Ever since we've been here, you was here before I was here. Amen. We've been here 25, 6 years. Some of y'all have been here longer than that. And you've seen some of the former things and the glory that was in Christ's worship center at the time. Praise God, it's a good church, it's a good glory in it right now. But it can even be better if we'll stay focused on what the Lord wants us to do and get out of our idleness and say, okay, God, here I am. Here I am. We sang a song a while ago, here I am. Here I am. I surrender. I surrender. Go ahead, Lord, use me to help fulfill the calling that you have on my life. Haggai is helping these people overcome this discouragement and this tendency to do nothing. Uh, and, and he's showing by a, a strong, encouraging word from the Lord. Sometimes it takes other people to, to, to kind of get the spark going. Are you t uh, speaking to your brothers and sisters and encouraging them and saying, hey, man, come on, let's work together on this. Let's, let's see what we can do to, to kind of help this, this ministry grow. Come on, man, you want to help me with this one? You want to help me with this one so we can kind of get this going? See, you can be the word that sparks somebody that kind of gets them moving again. You know, a lot of people won't come to you and say, hey, what can I do? But if you ask them to do something, they'll, they'll say, yeah, what can I do? They're waiting for that kind of spark a lot of times. Amen. And you might be the one that the Lord wants to use in that. Amen. We must allow God to, uh, and his word to continue in our life, and, and that way we know we're going in the right direction. We can cast out all this discouragement and restore the blessings of God by trusting in Him and meditating on Him every day. You know the scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Oh, I can never do that. Oh, man. See, it starts right here. You've got to have a mind to work. 
You got to mind, have a mind to, to do something. And when it starts here, it gets here. And when it gets in the heart, it gets here. It puts into action. Amen. Philippians says it like this. Very good scripture when you're talking about the mind. Philippians 4. Look what it says here in verse uh, 7. And the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, shall, be, shall keep your hearts and the minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You hear me? Think on these things. What things? Pure things. Things of good report. Lovely things. Virtue. Praise. Think on these things, he says. When you do that, it takes discouragement away. But I'm discouraged. I'm depressed, Pastor Steve. Well, start thinking on something positive. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Oh, I'm not going to have a good day today. I'm just not going to have Well, you're not because you've already thought it. But I like what Sister Jolene said. Do you remember this, Jolene? Jolene said a few weeks ago, she got up and she looked in the mirror and said, I'm going to, have, I'm going to be happy today. I'm going to have a good day today. Remember that? And what kind of day did you have, sister? What kind of day did you have? A good day. I, I'm, I'm going to have a good day today. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy today. And you set things in motion by your words. There's power in your words, folks. Don't think there ain't. There is power in your words. Amen. Amen. Finish up with this scripture right here. Haggai chapter 2. Final point I want to get across to you. I hope you've learned something here today. Because, folks, we can learn from the Lord on how what He wants us to be in Him. Verse 15. And now I pray you. Consider from this day upward, from before a stone is laid upon another stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days were, when one came to an heap of twenty measures, there were but ten. When one came to press fat for to draw fifty uh, vessels out of the press, there were but twenty. I smote you with blasting, and with mildew, and with hail. And in all the labors of your hands, yet ye turn not to me, saith the Lord. Consider now from this day upward, and from four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even to the day of the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day, I will bless you. Again and again. The word of the Lord came to Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the, uh, the throne of the kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And I will overthrow the chariots and, I will, and those that ride in them. Amen. And the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheatel, and uh, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Final point is this. Blessings are missed when we look to other means for our protection and our progress instead of the Lord. When you really think about that, Haggai gets this special word from God assuring the people that he will provide the protection for them that he will provide the progress for him against all their enemies as long as they keep their eyes on him. Now listen to me, folks. We, too, have got to do the same. We have got to seek ye first the kingdom of God for our protection, for our progress, for our, 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 our every being. Everything's got to be on the Lord here today. Amen. Amen. Worship team, get ready to come forward. Remember this, folks? <laughs> Remember, look right here for a second. And what I said a while ago about this right here, what do you see? What do you see? Well, I just see the black dot, Pastor Steve. I just see the, the discouragement. I just see the heartache. I just see the troubles I got going on in my life and in my family. But you've missed a whole bigger page here of the blessings that God wants to pour out for you. We need to get our eyes off, off of the dot and onto him.
There's more blessings coming your way than discouragements. There's more blessings you're coming, coming your way than disappointments. There's more blessings from the Lord coming your way than, than trials. Do we run through them? Yeah. It rains on the just and the unjust. Some days are good. Some days are bad. But one thing about it, the same God of the mountain is the same God in the valley. Amen. Same God in the valley. All he's saying is this. I want you to access my blessings. And I want you to access them by, by keeping the purpose and priorities and plans that I have for you in your life. I want you to access them by staying in my will, staying in my word, and staying in my ways. Folks, I want you to access the blessing that I have for you, saith the Lord, but don't procrastinate. Lord, help us. I want, he wants to bless you here out of your discouragement. <laughs> Blessings are missed when we put our progress and our, and, our, and our protection in everything but the Lord. Amen. Let's stand. Lord, I thank you today for the word. I know, Lord, that even dealing with the prophet Haggai at that time, the whole focus was the temple had been destroyed. Your kingdom, your glory had been kind of diminished a little bit there. And then they come out. They come out of a 70-year captivity in Babylon. And instead of getting excited to come back, Lord, and build the temple back and restore the glory back into the temple like you wanted, they said idle. They lost heart. They didn't have the will to work. And I thank you for people like this prophet that you used to wake them up and said, look, man, let's wake up. Get restored back again because the, the latter glory is going to be better than the former. And I thank you that that's what you want to do in the church today. It don't matter what this church or any church has been in the past. No matter what glory fell down in the past, the latter can be even greater if we'll all put our focus on it. So I thank you, Lord, for the blessings today. Now I ask you, if there's anyone here today that you've knocked on their heart and, and you have shown them a calling and a gifting and a, and a, and a direction that you want them to go and they're, they're still procrastinating, I pray, God, right now that you'll tear that wall down. That you'll tear that wall down, Lord, and give them the strength. Give them the willpower. Give them the drive, Lord, to step forward and say, Here I am. Use me. Lord, if there's anybody in this place today that hasn't made you as Lord and Savior, have never accepted you as their personal Savior and never asked you to forgive them for their sins, I pray that they'll do that today too. Because, Lord, I know you got a calling for them. And time is getting short, and there's no time to, to play around. So, Lord, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for the ones that have come here today to hear the word. Now help us, Lord, as we leave here today. Help us with this word that's been planted in our heart. Bring someone to water it. Bring someone to soak it down, Lord, and help it germinate. And then, God, we know when that happens, you're going to give that increase. We're looking forward to it. In Jesus' name, amen. These altars are open. If you need to come and pray over a special uh, need, maybe you've got an issue you need to pray about. Maybe you're doing good with God and, and you're a little confused. God is not the altar of confusion. You know that? Mm -hmm. If you're confused today, hey, get that out. That ain't the Lord. He gives perfect plan, perfect ways, and you can receive them here today in Jesus' name. Tis so sweet to trust Him.